morning YouTube welcome back get wrenching I'm your host Murray and as you can see here today this is what we're doing today we're gonna try to find out what this skip is and also yeah I got all this here and time and lights and that so sit back relax grab yourself a beverage sandwich and we'll get at this YouTube get this out of the way we're gonna try the easy thing first we get a skip at about 2,000 rpm now the skip has got worse we had now a skip crossed it all and this morning it was quite foggy damp I had a route for a cruise she didn't run quite right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tear in to the distributor and we're gonna start putting these Napa lighting hoses on I didn't really want to do this because you know this isn't the performance ones that I want it but I thought it had a set and I looked and I looked and I looked I even told Napa to cancel these but they couldn't once they ordered them but I'm glad they didn't there they are so now it's cold water <laughs> so I'm gonna tear into this and I'll bring you back show you the finished product so what I like to do here is I like to lay all my spark plug wires out and then I can line these up beside the corresponding links which wow that one is really long <laughs> I hope this is the right set man I really do I'll get back to you on this one but man that one is really long or either that these ones were the wrong ones so yeah, this would be the longest one because this is the number two right here. Because the way it is on a Dodge, on the driver's side, it's one, three, one, three, five, seven. And on this side is two, four, six, and eight. So let me see what I can do here. So what I'm hoping to do here today, you two, with these, I got the passenger side done. I'm hoping to change these first, because, you know, process of elimination, you always do the easy things first. So let's hope when I replace all these that that skip is gone, and the rough idle's gone, and we're back to normal. So you got the number one spark plug wire on there. On to the next one. I like doing these one at a time. Is like I said, I know the fire and order of this engine, but I like doing them one at a time. This makes it easier. I still say this spark plug wires that were on the car are oh god oh this has been fun YouTube because different style wires different manufacturers or just somebody put the wrong wires on the wrong application and of course none of them are the right length so I'm playing the old guessing game <laughs> Two wires are left are the same length. And I really hope that they fit 
they plug in right and they do everything they're supposed to so there's that one I like to tuck them down they say you can get the cross fire and all this stuff you got to separate it I haven't ran into that yet I'm saying you won't like that in the way there. So used to working without a camera. <laughs> Slide that in there like so. Last wire. Let's hope I get the fire in order right because I will double check the fire in order before I fire it up. If you were here last time I remember dielectric grease to both ends so that way it slides over. Spark plug's good and the distributor good. And or and they also will keep a watertight seal from condensation, which Dodge has a big problem with, especially guys and gals that go off roading with them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? WD is your best friend. I think I've mentioned that before in one of my videos. I know WD was, was my best friend a lot of times with these old things. I've had to draw the old distributor cap on the old Dodge. W150 a couple times. There we are. So, there we are. There we go. There we are. We should be all good here now. So, remember one, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, number two. There we are. Let's hit the key and see what the heck we got going on now. say is fudge it's still there let's get digging into this carburetor which I didn't want to do damn it oh, so now we're gonna dig into this carburetor see what's going on yeah there's a couple little linkage things you got to disconnect in order to get the, the top off here so even those pliers and little pecks are your best friend with these Try not to get them down inside the engine because we are taking this apart. That disconnect the that linkage. Let's hope you don't fall out of there. You're not gonna fall out of the area. You got a star on you. That's good. So what do we need to get this fall out? Okay, I see how you are. Flathead. This is why I'm going to use my handy dandy set. Yes, this, we'll use my handy dandy set here. Now, we'll try to be very careful to pick the top of this up. We've got to disconnect this. That's a fly head. So we'll disconnect it. into the top of this carburetor just want to see if there's any dirt and if I think there's any dirt I'll take the carburetor completely off the engine and we'll blow every orifice out because the worst thing is this sat around it's a brand new carburetor brand hammer new is the box and put on this car and this car only but but <laughs> a big but is it sat in this car it ran and you know be shut off for a month or two so yeah there we go like that so 
Put that down there. I'll pick this up and lay that down in there. One of these magnetic trays are perfect for this. So now all I have to do is disconnect this fuel line. We'll make a mess. Right? Let's do that. Let's make a mess. I'll probably grab a rake underneath there. We'll pull the top off. We'll be able to take a quick look in there, see if there's any dirt or any of that white gunk. Usually associate with ethanol fuels, which I got this weird feeling is what's giving me most of my issues. Oh yeah, we've got fuel pressure sprayed all over the engine. That's always nice. Oh, what? Well, there's another little doodad for the choke. Okay. Let's remove that little clip there, and that will take care of that little door. These little, these little buggers, they're dangerous. <laughs> they may fall into the engine. There we go. So now, I'll get my Torax bit. We'll break the tops of these. I mean, this, this little kit comes with a, with a lot of stuff. There we go, first try. Ha, ah, right on, just like I rebuilt one of these, which I have. I rebuilt a carter, which is the same thing, AFB. And put it on this car. But, a week after I rebuilt it, the bushings and stuff all went. They were starting to leak. I started getting a hard start. And that's because she was flooding herself. Also, too, guys and gals, like, if you're... If you don't know what you know how this comes apart take a picture first that's what I've done there's also lots and lots of help there on YouTube and Google you can get pictures and stuff a lot of this wizardry stuff carburetors are kind of foreign to me I grew up in a time where there still was a lot of carburetors around, but then they were phasing it. By the time I started working on cars in the mechanic world, you rarely ever saw a carburetor. It was all fuel injection. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Oh, wrong side for that. Come oh, on, Murray, focus here. Good people at YouTube land want, don't want to see you screw up like that. So, this one will be for this, and this is what we do. So YouTube, what I'm going to do is I'll get into this and I'll bring you back. So, we're back. I got all the thousand screws out of here. And the top's loosening. It looks like the gasket isn't going to tear, which is good because, like I said, this is a brand hammer new carburetor. I'll check the height of the floats too while I'm in here. See how they hang. So let's. Get right inside here and see what it looks like. Huh. Huh. Whatever that is, a little schmutz or something. I do see a little bit of dirt in there. So I'm probably just gonna take this off. We'll be on the safe side. Yeah, I see some sediment in there. I'll blow down through the jets and stuff. We'll take this right off. That way we can have a real darn good look at this. So that means we're gonna have to disconnect all this. All right, I'll get back at you. Captain's log, 22, 10, 20, 22 wrong episode but you know dirt in here 
And look at the lovely color of gas. I just dumped out of this thing. Eh. And this was completely clean container, no dirt, nothing. So there is dirt, and the gas is like yellow and orange and oh. Uh. So I do have another new fuel filter to put on to the tank, from the tank to the pump. Check out. Filter going to the carburetor. It does not show yellowy, orangey gas. And he was wondering about this weird intake. This is, man, this here to me is like restruction and, you know, it should be a dual plane. Me and my buddy Brandon was talking about this last night. I should just say screw it and go get that dual plane off that 318 stalker and just get the adapter plate and set the intake gasket and it'll be done. So I'll get into this and start using this lovely carb clean and spray every orifice the squirters the boosters i'm gonna take them all off there's little gaskets underneath these but this is the carburetor's new enough i shouldn't have to worry about and if i do this one hasn't been run long enough and this is all new gaskets and i still have some spare gaskets in this rebuild kit and also i got the wizard book so excuse me if i don't film a lot it's just these are really tedious, and if I have any concerns I'd like to show you or certain little tricks, I'll bring you back. So, got all the squirters out, boosters. There's a little ball, a little brass piece that flits in there. The ball goes in first, and then the brass piece goes on top. It sits right in here. As you can see, look at my nice clean carburetor. It most definitely was not. So now what I'm doing, so I got some carb cleaner. I'm going to soak in here. And I'm going to go to dinner. So I'm going to fire up my air compressor. I'm going to blow every orifice out. And I'm going to put pressurized air. I've already squirt brake cleaner through all these into that, into this container. That's where all that dirt comes from. And from inside here. And I'm going to spray the whole outside down too and blow it all down. And spray it again blow it down spray it again blow it down you can never be too careful with dirt inside a carburetor so i'm gonna soak this go grab a quick bite to eat fire up the air compressor and i'll bring you back okay youtube I'm back this is all cleaned out now blew everything all out good soaked down twice as carb cleaner the whole body everything all these are all done you can see, man, the dirt and the crap that was in there and the cloudiness, like, I don't know. So we'll make sure that these floats are set to 15 sixteenths on the drop, like so. Like, make sure that the measurement between the front of the float to the top of the curb, like, is 15 sixteenths of an inch for the drop. And we'll make sure this filter inside of here is cleaned out. So... Let me get back jamming the tunes and we'll get back to putting this together. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get this thing running. Okay, YouTube. Carburetor's back together. These are the metering rods I was telling you about. So how they go on, you just flip this little trap door to the side here. And there's a little hole in there. You just run the spring right down inside. And the way to check these to make sure you get the white the right weight of springs onto them is you leave them just like that fire up and if they drop they drop down the holes you're good to go if they don't you need a little lighter spring i've checked that already and that's working perfect so right now all i gotta do now is just take that out and make sure that filter is clean and then they'll go back to seeing if this thing will run right please I'm hoping but now all my choke settings are all screwed up because you know that little transfer slot they want only just a little bit of the hole showing well to do that i had to back my choke adjustment all the way off now i got to reset that so this is going to be fun because now we're starting off from scratch again great face oh, i didn't want to deal with carburetors today but what what do you do when you're trying to find a skip and it it's a that darn thing so I'll get back at you. Okay, YouTube. That's the old filter. Gas discolored and cloudy. 
little bit of dirt into it. Great. This one. Come on. About the same. So both those filters are now new. That one's new. That one's new. So I got one before the filter and one after the filter. And it's been like this since this carburetor's been on this vehicle. I don't know how dirt has got by and into that. And I haven't filled up anything inside that carburetor to get it to start. I just let the fuel pump fill it up and then I give it a couple pumps and away we go. So it's full of uh, sea foam right now. I did fill the vents up with sea foam. Just something clean. They're new out the bottles. So that way they give her a little fighting chance to start and then it'll allow the fuel to come up. I highly doubt it she's going to stay running, but I'll set the camera up and we'll see what we can do. Give me, where's that screwdriver at? Let's get her a little turny turn on this. I don't want to. Now, we'll give this a little touch. Let's see if that helps. YouTube, there's her idle. There's our vacuum reading. Let's see if we can get this here now. Don't know if that's showing up, but we're at 13 degrees and 50 to 800. All that kind of vacuum. The choke, I'm not sure, set up 100%, but it is running good. It's running way better. And the stumble is gone. Oh, I just hope I don't have any more issues. 
I'll show you here. Let's see, because you really tell when she got the two grand. They ain't nice and smooth now. Probably draw the neighbors nuts, but I'm sorry. I gotta do this to get this thing tuned. So, I'll get everything buttoned up. We're gonna go for a little rip, see how this works. I'll let you know on the update. Hey, YouTube. So we're, me and the young fellas, just out for a little burn here. Just leaving the house now. So far, so good. Seems, seems like it's running way better. Pour a can sea foam in the in the tank. I picked up in Halifax and I was up there working. Thanks my buddy Chris for pointing that out. It was on sale at Prince Auto. Greatly appreciate it. Use both cans. So very on. 20 bucks for the sea foam. There you go. Can of carb cleaner. A little bit of time and yeah, it was a couple hours. Like I was making sure that everything was spick and span clean. Like we are running flawlessly right, right now. Like this is this is awesome. Oh, can't. I'm just going up to get some gas. I just want to take this. I'm not saying it's completely fixed because I don't want to jinx myself. But so far, so good. And as you can see here, you can hear echoing there out through the buildings. So yeah, we're just cruise along. No, so far, so I, I'm pulling almost 21 inches of mercury on the back and gauge. She leveled out. She didn't fluctuate. The timing. This had a lean burn system onto it, so man, the timing is that's weird. Oh, we got a bunch of square bodies down here. Right on. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Square body shifts. I'm a Dodge guy, but I love square bodies. <laughs> you know. Anyway, off topic here. But no, the timing. I gotta get a timing light where I can actually set it with the advance and what have you. So we're gonna go to the gas station, get some gas, maybe go up to Tim Hortons, grab a coffee, which I haven't done in a long time, and we're gonna go for a little cruise and see how this thing's gonna work. Hello YouTube. We're on the highway. I got the windows down, it's quite hot. Felt like the stumble come back after I gassed up. Making me really wonder what's in this tank. They're sand getting that carburetor, but let's see this hill. went for a little drive we're back home uh, if you can't hear that that skip is back So YouTube, welcome back. It's day two now. Went for a drive this morning early, six o'clock is early before the family was up. Went for a little burn, had some time to think about some things, and you know, before I can give you a good close out to this video. I was so frustrated yesterday, I just didn't even bother filming and went in the house. I'm my own worst enemy. I overthink things. My skip is not the carburetor and on the Edelbrock itself. 
it had dirt to it and it had condensation in it, water. So in my being stupid, well, yes, because I had some time to think about it last night and my tent, remember, I remember telling you guys and gals of YouTube land some time back that it does get up to 20 degrees in the wintertime in that tent from like minus 10 to 20 degrees. There's a 30 degree temperature swing. Well, with a gas tank, with a quarter of a tank to half a tank of gas in it at any given time should be full at that given time. And me being a cheapskate did not <laughs> and gave myself my own headaches. <laughs> Because I sat there and thought about it last night. Well, this car come from Alberta. And I remember watching as they're filling up those tanks, stuff at them gas stations, especially where, where I was living. I'm not going to say. don't want to put any gas stations down. But I remember watching the old dust storms in the summertime just blow right down there. And I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, that's where sand come by. But I'm still trying to figure out how it got past two filters. But water, that would definitely give me my skip. I filled the tank up yesterday. I'm down to, I got three quarters of a tank left now. Put two cans of seafoam in that tank, so I'm going to burn it through, but I am dropping the tank and I'm going to clean it. My biggest problem right now is I can find gas tanks, I can find the lock ring and the seal. The only problem is I can't find is the ascending unit. So I'm going to do some research and digging into that to see what other vehicles at Chrysler and their line head for sending units that they use the same. So hopefully, hopefully I drop the tank down and I'm going to blow the lines all out too. YouTube, don't worry. They're all going to be cleaned thoroughly with carb cleaner and all the rubber lines, all the little rubber joiners that go from your tank to your steel lines and then from your fuel pump up, that's going to be a steel line because I am going to be running a fuel pressure regulator. That carburetor may not be staying on the car because I do plan on drag racing hopefully next year maybe maybe we'll see so if you liked what you saw please like share and subscribe thanks to all who have subscribed and all the great comments and the likes and whatever that makes me feel really great if you have a bad comment don't mind those either constructive criticism that's how we learn like I said you're learning this with me. I'm not a not very big on curbs. It's not that I don't like them because they are simple when you start to understand the theory of them. Especially that Edelbrock, like they're not that they're not that bad. Enough of me jib jabbering. So just remember, get off the couch. Wherever it is that you whatever you work on, wherever you work on it, tent, driveway, garage, just remember stay safe and get wrenching. We'll see you next time.